There has been a head-spinning amount of flooding this month, and not just in North Carolina. Texas, New Mexico, Chicago, New York, New Jersey, Missouri. The Texas floods were from the remnants of a tropical storm. The flooding in our area was from a tropical depression. In parts of Chapel Hill, it was still more rain than what we saw from Hurricane Fran. But it doesn't always take a tropical system to cause major flooding. Earlier this week, New Jersey and New York saw one of the most intense storms in their history, wreaking havoc on airports, subways, roads, and more. And all that rain had nothing to do with a tropical storm. Also, you don't have to be in a floodplain to get bad damage. 43% of repeatedly flooded North Carolina buildings are outside FEMA flood zones. All this to say we are dealing with more dangerous rain events. But why? Why have we had so much rain here in North Carolina this month? Raleigh has already more than doubled its normal monthly rainfall. Kat, explain what's going on here. Well, the jet stream setup, when we look at the big picture here, here's what we've got going on. The ridge is to our west, so that means that we don't have the sinking air that keeps the storms from forming during the summer months. Instead, we're not getting any fronts here, so we are just stuck in this hot, humid, stormy pattern. So we've got a lot of energy in these storms, and they're able to dump some pretty intense rainfall with impressive rates and cat we are not even near the peak of hurricane season nowhere near the peak of hurricane season that comes during the month of september september 10th to be exact we do often see the activity go up though as we head into the month of august and when you look at the monthly flash flood reports August and September both average more flash flood reports across central North Carolina, so we still have a long ways to go for this season. Kat, thank you. If you don't have flood insurance because you're not on a floodplain, here is something you need to know. FEMA's flood maps are outdated. They rely on 1970s data. WRL climate change reporter Liz McLaughlin has been looking into this and more. Liz, these maps just aren't outdated. They are decades old. Exactly. Uh, our flood blueprints are modeled from the 1970s. So it really only takes rivers and coastal flooding into account and really ignores small waterways that now overflow and doesn't take climate change into account. So people are really underestimating their risk. And a UNC study that just came out this week showed that of the buildings across the state that repeatedly flood, 43% were outside of those mapped zones. So people are really underestimating their risk. Then they're underinsured and uh, blindsided when the water pours in. And this is really important information when considering over the last few decades, there's been increasing intensity in rainfall. Exactly. And just in the Triangle area, about 21 percent higher rainfall intensity than we saw in, in 1970. So that means more rain in less time. And then warmer air also holds more moisture. So for every one degree Celsius of warming, seven percent more water vapor. Warmer ocean temperatures are also a factor here because that gives storms more fuel. So something like Chantal, even though it was downgraded to a tropical depression, it can still dump hurricane levels in just a single day. Wow. Liz, thank you. The climate is changing. Our maps and infrastructure may not be keeping pace, but you can. There are still simple steps you can take right now to make sure you are prepared. Contractors showed us what to look for around the house before a storm hits. We've highlighted tools and alerts you can sign up for to stay informed. And if the worst does happen, Five on Your Side has extensive reporting on how you can respond. All of these stories are on the WRL YouTube page and WRL.com.